someone did a study recently that showed that about half of, of the top tech companies were founded by immigrants directly. Uh, so these are, these are issues that don't just touch our part of the industry, but really touch the whole country and touch what is right for us to do. There are 13 states that connect the United States and Canada, but lately the relationship between Silicon Valley and Canada has been anything but connected. Work visas for Canadian citizens, particularly entrepreneurs, are hard to come by. Jay Daravala, a middle-aged Indian-born Canadian, has been an entrepreneur for most of his working life. Four years ago, he started his own tech company, Yaktrack, which took away his right to have a work visa. He is now on a limiting visitor visa, which doesn't allow him to set roots in Silicon Valley. This is certainly a story where um, uh, something that, because the U.S. has so many strengths, because Silicon Valley has so many strengths, it's like somehow Silicon Valley continues to succeed in spite of this thing, certainly not because of this thing. Uh, because, I mean, the, the, the power of the valley is really like the power of Hollywood. If you want to be, um, you know, if you're anywhere in the world and you want to be, like, in the movies, then you come to Hollywood, basically. So that's, for people like me, I mean, like, it doesn't matter. Every single uh, uh, U.S. engineering degree, uh, certainly a Ph.D. or a Master's, should come uh, <laughs> with a green card stamped on it. Like, it makes no sense uh, for the U.S., which is actually built on on immigration, you know, and bringing in talent and that kind of stuff, uh, to be literally sending people home. With government programs established for foreign and Canadian citizens, Canada is opening its arms to entrepreneurs. This campaign was advertised when Canadian Immigration Minister Jason Kenney came to the Bay Area and promoted signs on the 101 that said, H-1B problems? Pivot to Canada. Not every Canadian has had the same struggles. Chris Newman came to Stanford in 2002 for his Master's of Engineering. After graduation, he secured a job, which granted him a work visa. Now Newman is the founder and CEO of Data Hero. You know, a lot of the people you see who struggle, I think, to be totally honest, come in a little bit naive, which is, I'm just going to show up in the country, I'm going to find a way to stay here. And, you know, that's really not even just an issue of, of Canadians, so much as it is um, you know, you have Americans who suddenly, you know, they move to California, I'm going to strike it rich, right? And they get here and, and maybe their idea isn't that good. Maybe they haven't done the due diligence. Um, because at the end of the day, the path for an entrepreneur to stay in the U.S. today is, you know, dominated by getting an American VC to fund you, right? And that's a hard path even if you're already in the country. So a lot of people from other countries are getting increasingly fed up with the nonsense that they have to deal with from the bureaucracy standpoint, from the, um, uh, you know, feeling interrogated every time you come into the country on a legitimate visa uh, by a, you know, individual with a chip on their shoulder, um, the tolerance is, is going away. And I think people are starting to increasingly say, you know what, I can do this somewhere else. This is Stephanie Wetmore reporting for the Peninsula Press, a project of the Stanford Graduate Program in Journalism.